Oh, we're just on the phone again with uh, Bill Kruger, William Kruger, old school trucker. Boy, that guy's got a lot of stories. I don't have that many trucking stories. I don't think I do. I mean, I get, I get thousands of pictures, which I'm blessed that I, my dad always took pictures and I always took pictures and I still do. But um, he's got some stories. What makes me miss the road. Boy, I miss the road sometimes. He's talking about, did anybody ever run across Route 20? Which is funny, I live right off of Route 20. But he's talking about out west. And I ran Route 20 across Nebraska. Gordon, Nebraska, over to Lusk. I didn't run it all the way past, I didn't run past Lusk. And I picked it up over in Oregon, out Bend, Oregon, out that way, heading towards Eugene. Beautiful country out there. Much more scenic than around here, though. It's Massachusetts is pretty scenic too, but you got to go a little further west. Boston Trucker here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy it. I missed the road. It was so simple. I was really good at running the road too. Even at a young age, even at a young age, I was good at running the road. I didn't. I was very lucky because I don't feel like I had. There was any learning curve for me. I learned it from my dad. And when I started running the road, and I was I was 18, almost 19, on my own, illegally. We've talked about that before, but yeah, I ran the road when I was 18. Running out to Indiana, down to South Carolina, then started running Vegas and LA. 18 years old. It's no big deal. I mean, you can you can join the service. You're 18 years old, so I think certain people should be able to drive over the road at 18. Especially these second generation, third generation teenagers that want to do it for a living. I don't think there should be any pilot program. Let them go. Let them go. I went. It was no big deal. Anyways. Yeah, when I ran the road, let's see, my first over the road experience on my own. Land Transport, Cab Over International, 9670. No, nope, not a fancy truck. I don't even know what it had. A horsepower. Probably like a 250 Cummins. I don't know. Nine speed. Nothing fancy. It didn't even have a mattress in the truck, I remember. Because I was using that truck to run local. And then a guy called in sick, and my dispatcher was like, hey, can you run out to Indiana? Boom, Evansville, Indiana, went down to South Carolina, dropped five drops down there, picked up a load of paper out of IP in Georgetown, South Carolina, ran it back. It's like 48,000 pounds. The trucks were light. And I remember, I was, I was not nervous. I swear to God, I was not nervous, which is crazy. Which is crazy. I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. I knew what to do. I knew how to act accordingly. I didn't act like an ass. I was professional. And I was in my glory, man. And then I ran the road like that for 20 years. I ran that international without a mattress. I had a piece of foam in there for a few months before they got me a mattress. Man, yeah. I didn't really sleep much anyways. I wasn't in the but we didn't run in the we weren't in the bucks very often. I mean it was it was eight, nine hundred miles a day. You know, every twenty-four hours. Sleep four hours. I loved it. And I, they took me out of that international, put me in the uh, cab over Mac MH, I guess you call it an MH. Ultraliner, man, I love that Red Mac. That was the first truck I started like taking care of. Washing it, added some chrome covers. I didn't polish yet. I mean, I had steel wheels, I didn't polish. But that Mac, man, I love that old Mac. 
good air ride cab. Had a low doghouse, nice, had a nice view across the window. Road really good. Had a nice. Look, the bunk was pretty spacious compared to the International. Had men at at mag. Ugh, I can't talk. Had magnetic curtains, so they would they would shut nice and tight. It would be nice and dark in there. And I ran that cab over Mac for almost two years. And then I went to drive for an owner operate at least to uh, land. Jimmy Smith out of he had a hook set in New Hampshire. He leased a brand new Freightliner FLD 120 with a 60 inch walk in flat top bunk to Shano. Shano out of St. Paul, Minnesota, all in meat. And Jimmy was a company driver for uh, Transgas on Bill Rickamass. And he had this truck. So I went to drive for Jimmy, and I deadheaded out to St. Paul with his with his truck and Shano trailer. And I went to Shano, went to orientation. I hauled meat for about a month. Box meat wasn't swinging beef. It'd be cool if it was swinging beef that I could say I called swinging beef, but it was box beef on the floor. I hauled that out to the East Coast, back and forth. And then I had to go for my DOT physical, and I had to go to their doctor, and he saw my hand, my fingers, and uh, he denied me and said I had to get a waiver. Well, how do you get a waiver, doc? Well, you got to go back to Massachusetts, and you got to file for a waiver, and blah, 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 and how long does that take? Well, that's three months. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I'm out here in Minnesota with a guy's truck. So Jimmy made some phone calls. He called Land Transport, where I used to work, and where he used to work. And he said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Don't tell Shano anything. I want Tonight, I want you to bobtail from St. Paul down to Evansville, Indiana, where Land had a, tr Land had a terminal down there. And we're going to lease to Land Transport. And you'll go back to hauling what you used to haul, which is TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx stores, pretty much. So I bobtailed overnight down to Evansville. When I got to the office in Evansville, Morgan, Morgan Road, Evansville, little little white office. It might have been a house. I can't remember. And uh, we took Shano's bingo card. Bingo card. A bingo card. You had to have a stamp on each for each state. There were 48 squares, and you had to have a stamp on each square for each state you were permitted to run through. We took Shano's bingo card and stapled it over Land Transport's bingo card, which was illegal. I didn't know anything. I was just a dumb kid. I don't know. And a lot of staples. Stapled all the way. All the whole card. I mean, you couldn't open that thing. I mean, there must have been 50 staples in that card. I mean, if that didn't say we're trying to get away with something, I don't know, I don't know what did. It's, like, it's almost like running a, le a, a loose leaf logbook in a binder and handing it to the DOT and, and trying to act like you're not trying to get away with something. I mean, please. It's obvious. So, I start hauling for land. Running, I'm running, and I'm running Vegas every week. Uh, Evansville to Vegas, back to back to Worcester, Massachusetts, back to Evansville, back to Vegas, drop down to LA, some loads, pick up a floor load down there, then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, I get pulled over in uh, Fort Morgan, Colorado. I was on my way out there, and I get pulled into the scale late in the day. Guy's getting ready to go home. And he asked me for my bingo card. He just looks at me like, now, forget the fact. No, I was of age then. I think I was of age then. I can't even remember. I might have been 21 by then. Anyways, he sees the bingo card. He's like, he's like, I don't think so. And he hands me uh, one of those uh, staple removers. And he 
says, I want you to take every one of these staples out. I want you to do it here right in front of me. And he goes, and if I wasn't going home, I'd be taking you to jail tonight. You can see the judge tomorrow. And once you take all those staples out, you're gonna turn around the next exit. And you're gonna exit my state the way you came in. And you're gonna go around the top over Wyoming and don't come back to Colorado till you're legal. <clears throat> Which, you know, I was, I, yeah, I was nervous. I was nervous when that happened. Yeah, of course. You know, I called up, I called up Jimmy. Like, I was mad. I was like, this is bullshit. Sorry, sorry for the language, folks. This is BS. You know, I, I, I you know, I almost went to jail. We got to get legal and blah 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 blah. So, I ran for Jimmy another month or two. Up going, I don't remember the reason why, but I ended up going back to work for land as a company driver. And I got a conventional international with a 42 inch bunk. 9400, I think. And uh, I ran for them for another year. That was 91 into 92. And then March 92. They were talking about the CDL was coming out. We had class one licenses up to that point. Class one was a, what you call a class A now. CDL was coming out, everybody's gotta run legal. And I decided to get out of there and I went to work for Bud Meyer Truck Lines, sight unseen. I, they never seen me. I never seen any of their trucks. I just seen one of their pamphlets on the truck stop rack. That's, you know, before the internet, the way you found a job was either word of mouth or they had these racks, these like pamphlet racks. You know, you might see them in a rest area, you know, like scenic rest area, you know. And, uh, oh, Bud Meyer Truck Lines, Hi, they'll hire me at, I was at 22, I was 22 now. They were hired 22 year old drivers with, with uh, two years experience, so. I called up land on the phone. I don't even think I knew what kind of trucks they had, to be honest, which is really weird. It must have known. I, I don't I don't have a good memory. Um, I, quit, I gave notice at land. But Maya said, said, told me that when they get a driver in the area, they'll get me a ride back up to Minnesota to get a go through orientation and get a truck. And I met up with Ken Casper. Well, he's an old timer. Was up in Gloucester, you got a load of frozen fish, minus 20 degrees. I met him at the Newton Service Plaza in Massachusetts. He yeah, was driving a conventional Peterbilt, a stand up bunk, big large car. I guess a large car to me. 13 speed. He said, I had a big, I had a big bag of stuff. He said, I don't got any room in my truck uh, for all your stuff. We're just gonna throw it in the back. So he threw it in the back with a frozen fish. And he says, uh, I hope you understand, you're not gonna just be sitting there, you're gonna do some driving, which I was all good for. So he drove that day and we got out to Scranton. Then he went to bed and I drove Scranton over across Ohio, Indiana. And we swapped out, you know what? I think I might have drove all the way to Minnesota because I remember he told me to wake him. He told me to wake him when we get outside of Lake City, which is where the terminal was. And as I'm coming up Route 61, it's before GPS now. So, you know, you're looking for stuff. You're not looking on a screen. And I'm pulling into the terminal. I'm like, Ken, we're here. I was calling him all the way up 61. Ken, we're 20 miles. Ken, we're 10 miles. Nothing. Like crickets in the back of the record. Snoring Z's. And I pulled in the terminal, went through orientation, which was like a day. They gave me a choice of trucks that were available, which was it was one Volvo, conventional Volvo, single bunk. It's a white Bruan lease truck. Didn't want that. It was um, a couple cab over 362 Peterbilts. 
and a couple cab over Kenworth K100s, all single bunks. The only Caterpillars in them. Um, I don't know what the horsepower was. It's probably 350. It wasn't. It wasn't big. It wasn't like it was a four and a quarter cat. It was like a 350 cat. I think they had 10 speeds in them. I took the Peterbilt. I like the look. I I had driven the K100 before. I like the look of the cat of the cab over Pete more. Um, and I drove that truck for six months. Never polished the tanks or wheels. It had caps on it. Kept it clean. Ran my butt off. Ran my butt off. And you know we were had you know we was, I went there to, to run legal, but I mean I was still running 4,200, 4,500 miles a week. And then I got to the yard one day and uh, Dale. Dale was a safety guy, Dale Leenan. He was escorting a driver out by the scruff of his neck. He had him holding him up by the shirt collar, walking him out of the out of the building. They must have got into it. And uh, Dale said, you see that truck over there? I said, yep. I said, it just became available. It's yours if you want it. And I was a uh, blue with silver fenders, 379 Peterbilt, short hood, 63 inch flat top bunk, the Vera Shield on the hood, on the uh, roof, 13 speed, four and a quarter cat, and uh, I was in heaven. I remember moving, moving into that truck. I was like, yeah, that's nice. That's a real truck. And I ran my butt off in that truck. You know, back in those days, I mostly ran out west, and I would only come back to Boston. I always lived in, you know, near Boston. I wouldn't come home till you know, I'd stay out for a couple months at a time. You know, unless they needed a load going to the East Coast and they had nobody to take it, I would just, you know, I'd go wherever they wanted me to. But I ran the Northwest, I ran Florida, Chicago, Texas, Arizona, anywhere. You know, I ran a lot of a lot of the Northwest in the winter time because nobody wanted to go up there. And I was too. Uh, I didn't care. I always carried cable chains with me. I had the boxes in the side box. Only had to put them on a couple times just to get out of situations, but most of the time if it was chain laws in effect, I would just catch up on sleep. I mean, it was never forced. You never forced the chain up. I remember one time I was over in Verde, Nevada just by Reno a load of Schwann's ice cream on going to Redding, California and somewhere else up there in Northern California. I'm going across. So I'm, I'm up on 80, you know, right outside of Donner Pass. Blizzard situation. Donner Pass is shut down. I mean, shut down. You can't even go over it with chains. So I pull into Boomtown. It's a nice big truck stop, casino. They got a Ruth Chris Steakhouse. I met up with another Bud, Bud Meyer driver, Margie La Margie Larson. She's from North Dakota. And uh, we did some gambling. We went to Ruth's, got some steaks. We had a good time, a lot of fun. I was dropping, I was playing $50 slots. I was out of my mind. And, uh, Next thing you know, the mountain is open, and there's another storm coming through. And they're telling us if you don't get over the mountain in the next couple hours, we're going to be shut down for another day or two. So I get in my truck. Now I'm tired from all that partying. <laughs> Not drinking. I wasn't. I wasn't. I've never been a big drinker. I'm just tired. I dragged my butt over that hill. No chains. Get over the hill, get the other side, drop it down into Sacramento. The snow, the snow's coming in behind me. And on the radio, they're like, we did, they just closed Donner. Just closed Donner again. I get over, I got my deliveries made. Went over to um, Salinas, Salinas. Loaded up some produce. Going straight back over to. Up to the cities in Minnesota. 
going up to Hawkins. Stupid value. Gonna go back over 80 because of the, the shutdown still. Then it dropped down 99. Go over to 58, over to Hatchaby, Bakersfield. 40 on up. Then what we would do is we take 40 over to Tucumcari, New Mexico. Get on 54. Run up through the Panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma. 54 over through Liberal, Kansas. All the way across Kansas, two lane mostly. I think I picked up 50 somewhere over there. Does that sound familiar? 50? I don't know. I got on you. I think I got back on the interstate over at Lebo Junction there, TA. Anybody remember those twins? Those twin waitresses over at Lebo Junction, TA? They had a nice diner across the street too, I used to go to. And then up 35, I think it was 35 or 35 right up to the cities. Two days, it's always two days, Minnesota to California. So almost 2,000 miles, two days. If you left Minnesota, let's say late Friday night loaded, or Wisconsin, late Friday night, going out west for a Monday morning delivery, yeah. Friday was kind of short, you know, you worked all day, you loaded all day, you, you drive as far as you can go, go to bed, get up early, Saturday morning, put it in the wind. Depending on the weather, we drop down, drop down to Kansas and go back out that way, make our way over to 40 if the weather was good. Run across 90 over to Kadoka, South Dakota, drop down through the Badlands, put you out on 20, run the court in Nebraska over to Lusk, see the girls over at Lusk at the fuel stop. You know what I mean, right? Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. See the girls over there working the uh, fuel counter there and make your way down to Casper, Wyoming, down to Rollins. Stop over there at Ripoffs, get some fuel and boogie on across. Saturday night, you make it over to, try to make it to the other side of Wyoming. Sometimes you can make it into Utah over to Get over to Fuel America and Payson. That was a good stop. That was a good truck stop. I don't know where that, that truck stop popped up out of nowhere as far as I'm concerned. Good food, good showers. Get over to Payson, Utah. Sunday morning, shit. You're almost in Barstow by then. You run Utah, Nevada, Arizona, right through the gorge there, Virgin Ridge of Gorge, Virgin River of Gorge, or Canyon, Vegas. At Barstow, late Sunday afternoon, go over to the sisters, get fluffed and buffed, get your truck all clean. That truck shut in it. What's that? Is that you, Mike? That's me. It's Sean. I gave up on Ben. Came over here at Red Baron. Oh, okay. I wondered where you went to work. How's that going? Uh, much better. Making as much or more money for a lot less hours. They might know how to spell Ortiz, like David Ortiz. Alright. Anyways, get out of Barstow. It was like a truck show over Barstow. Still is to this day. I wish I took pictures in Barstow. Man, some guys, Russell Spawn. Man, look up Russell Spawn on Facebook. That guy's got some photos of Barstow back in the 90s. Guys like Nicholas Hale would go there, still go there on Sundays and take pictures. I didn't take any pictures at Barstow. I wish I took more pictures. I got thousands of pictures. I don't have the right ones. I wish I had more loading dock pictures, more truck stop pictures. I'm, I got some good pictures, but man, I messed up. I could have, I could have done better. If I, if I only knew there was going to be an inter internet and people would be sharing pictures, I'd have done better for you. Anyways, get over to Barstow and then wait till dark. Drop down 15, go at the top of the hill at Cajon Pass, let a bunch of trucks go by it, the scales were open, I let 20 trucks go by, I count 20 trucks, 20 trucks go by me, I go down the hill, they fill up the scale, backed out onto the road, go around the scale, go down to LA, hit my delivery usually and went to bed there, two days. 48 hours, 2,000 miles. We slept, we got some sleep. We just sleep four or 
five, six hours a night, shower every day almost, <laughs> paper logs, nothing was legal, I think the statute of limitations are run out. Walmart truck passed to me. Ever since I drove for Walmart 30 years ago, I still like to look at the truck, side of the truck, and see what state they're out of. That guy's out of Raymond, New Hampshire. But, uh, yeah, I run LA, and then who knows where you load out of LA. Sometimes you went back to the TA in Ontario for a day or two, layover, because there wasn't anything, or we had a lot of good customers in LA. We hauled, we hauled food out of Chatsworth, we haul fish, fish for Kathy's, Kathy's brokerage, um, Kings Hawaiian bread out of Torrance, California. That was my one of my favorite backhauls. And I usually went back to my, right either Minnesota, Boston, Chicago, or Deerfield Beach, Florida. Kings Hawaiian was really cool. They give you they give you a giant loaf of bread every every time you load it. And on Christmas, they give you a big box of uh, macadamia nuts. That was always pretty cool. I was like Kings of Wyatt. And the loads didn't weigh anything. They were light. It was bread. Um, what else do we haul out of LA? Huh, kind of thing. I had a lot of produce, you know, up north, down to the valley, up Centro, all fish out of, um, oh, what's the name of that place? It's all fish uh, right, on, right on the. The Mexican uh, border there. What a brain fart. Not my national city. I can't remember the name of it. Go we'll fish out of there. I loved running California. Boy, I love. I always, I always like running California. I know there's got to be something wrong with me. It's the same with. I always like running New York City and Manhattan. I never had a problem with that. But uh, I loved running. I ran California almost every week. Two, three times a month. California used to haul used to haul Walden books out of Ontario, California. The drop and hook load. And that went up to um, Washington State. Up to uh, Federal Way, Washington. Right up there by the Flying J. We go to Walden Books. Unload of Walden Books, go over to Issaquah. I pulled that one out of nowhere. Issaquah, Washington, over there by Seattle. Load butter. We load butter. Those are heavy loads. So we'll load butter out of Issaquah. Going uh, to Kraft Foods in New Ulm, Minnesota. Boy, the names of these towns. Crazy, right? Issaquah, Indian. Obviously an Indian name. New Ulm. How do you spell New Ulm? New Ulm. U-L-M. Minnesota. I was all business back then, most of the time. A lot of miles, a lot of forgotten miles. A lot of, a lot of hammering down, paper law, everything was paper logs, but on a thousand mile days. For what? I don't know how they remember any of them. But it was good, it was good, I liked it. I don't think I can go back. I can go back over the road. I couldn't go back to thousand mile days, no way. I can barely get through a 10 hour day now. <laughs> Those five hour energies I'm taking. God. I didn't, do, I didn't do anything back then. Never did drugs. Never drank coffee. I went through a period where I drank Jolt Cola, which is all sugar. I drank a lot of that. That got me really fat. And then I cut back to Diet Pepsi, which I still drink Diet Pepsi to this day. Can a day when I'm working. I get a case right back here. I get my Diet Pepsi right here. There you go. If I need it, it's there. I already had one this morning. I always stop my morning out with my Diet Pepsi. And my popcorn. <laughs> my big bag of popcorn with garlic salt on it. The rest of the day are fruits and vegetables and some chicken, maybe. But uh, hey, you gotta have your uh, your enjoyment too. That's it. I don't have any other road stories that I can think of 
have right now, just thinking about taking out a Rand McNally map. Maybe this will be a video, right? I go from state to state to state, and then I point and see if it brings back some memories. My memories are shot. So bad. Spray wax for me from 
the trap. It, 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 if you could, I, I'm just about out here, and I don't think I'm going back to drop it off. We got. Yeah, what do we have it down in the basement? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, down down in the uh, basement. There should be empty bottles down there. Um, it, 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 if you don't find a, a spray ball, that's fine. I uh, I have one here. Um, I just I just need some some spray wax. All right, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Okay. Akron, Ohio, TA truck stop. Who remembers what was across the street? <laughs> what else? What else? Indiana, Angola, 76 truck stop. Lake Station, Indiana. Petro. TA and Gary. Never mind. I tried to avoid that place. Then there's Illinois. There was the um, Bomber. Was it the Bomber? Bomber truck stop. 76. Joliet. Truck stop, Dixie, oh, Dixie Home Trucker, Dixie Truckers Home Truck Stop, Dixie something. That was a good one in Illinois. Dixie, the Dixie Boy. I can't remember. You can tell me in the comments if you remember. And you head up towards Wisconsin. There at the uh, Twin Pine, so Pine Ridge, Pine something over there. Milwaukee and Madison, Wood Pine Restaurant, a diner, I can't remember the name of the town, was it Jefferson? I don't remember. Wisconsin had some good trucks, I always liked the Petro and Portage, that was a good one. We used to stop at the Petro 2 in Rochelle, Illinois, and 76 up there in Hudson, Wisconsin. Minnesota had some truck stops. They had one in South St. Paul, which I think was a dump. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember the name of that one. And you had one on the other side by by uh, uh, on the other side of St. Paul, Minneapolis, towards St. Cloud, up there where Long Haul is. What's the name of that town? It's with an A. Truck stop up there. And Minnesota, the Dakotas, I don't remember the Dakotas. South Dakota had, Sioux Falls had a pilot, just stop at that pilot. And North Dakota, Fargo, I think had a pilot. And my mind's shot, I don't know. Some nice stops across Montana. Over there, Living, Livingston. Is it Jake's or Fred's? Fred's? Anybody remember Fred's? Out there? Wasn't a truck stop, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I used to like a lot of truck stops. Stop there in Tucumcari at the Shell in Tucumcari. Get some, some tacos and some beans. Stop over there at Klein's Corner. Stop at, uh, Twin Arrows in Arizona used to be at the, uh, an old diner truck stop. It was just a diner with fuel, really. That was a good place to stop, right, right east of Flagstaff. Now there's a casino there, I guess. Um, where else? Lordsburg, New Mexico. The little truck stop. Holbrook, Holbrook, Arizona. Holbrook Truck Plaza, Texaco. That was a good stop. I like that place. Kingman, Arizona, of course, 76. Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas. Sierra Sids. Magic One Truck Wash. There's another one over there. Shoot, what's it called? Get off of Flamingo, I believe, right there. Wild West. Wild West Truck Plaza. That was a good truck stop. That was, that was a good time. California had some, you know, TA Ontario East. Never went to the west side. It was also a bingo. I think it was a bingo truck stop on north of the interstate. Hey, read your emails on your own time. We got trucking to do here. Um, bingo. I put
pulled in there on my first trip to LA. That was a mistake. I re I pulled in there. I realized it was a, either Bingo or Beacon. Beacon truck stop or Bingo. I pulled in there. I, I knew that was I knew that was not a place that I belonged. Lot lizards just jumping everywhere. Drug dealers, pimps. I think I pulled in and pulled out of there. Went over the TA in Ontario. Uh, what else is California that I like? Andy Hose Junction up there in Dunnigan. Ah, people make a big deal about that. I didn't find the women that attractive, to be honest. Now, the, the uniforms really didn't do it for me with that, with those, those pantyhose. But it's definitely nostalgic. I still got some stickers from there. I like the pilot in Madeira, California. Madeira. They had a really good buffet there. Oh yeah, Sandinella. 76 truck stop. You are hauling produce. Geeks truck stop out in Salinas. G I E G S Geeks. That was a dive too. It was a pro old produce stop. You go up the Oregon, up up into Oregon. You get the TA in Ashland. Oh, oh, you got the one up there at uh, Jubitz. Jubitz truck stop. How far are you from Jubitz right now? Me, I'm about 3,000 miles to Jubitz. There's a sign right there, 3,000 miles to Jubitz. <laughs> Who's been to Jubitz? J-U-B-I-T-Z. That was the nice place to go back in the 90s when I was going there. And in the 80s with my dad. It's another place we go uh, country dancing and had a nice bar there. Jubitz. Washington State, we had... Uh, Flying J at Federal Way, that was a dump. Ellensburg, TA, um, Flying J. What else is in Washington? I can't even remember. Texas, what about Texas? What do we have in Texas? I always like the Petro in Amarillo. It was a nice little truck stop east of Amarillo and Groom. It might have been more like, more like a restaurant with parking. Right there by, near, near the big cross over there. That was a good truck stop. Um, down in southern Texas, Dallas was always dangerous, Speedway, San Antonio, Austin down there, yeah, yeah, my mind's faded, can't remember those truck stops, Louisiana, Petro and Hammond, just a stop there, Mississippi, yeah, I can't remember, Alabama, yep. 76 in Alabama, I used to stop at. I think it became a Petro. I don't know if it's the same place. Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa 76. And uh, Florida. Risque Cafe. Come on now. Who's been to the Risque, Risque Cafe? <laughs> yeah, I went once. I had to check it out. Let's see what that was about. They had that dump of a truck stop. When you went to Miami, there was nothing. It was out in uh, Weston, the town of Weston. It was like a um, place was a dump, but they had tiki huts outside. It was a liquor, liquor and tiki huts. Tiki huts. They had to pay to park there. But it was like the only place to go. If you are delivering the Miami area or getting produce in that area, you used to haul produce out of uh, Florida and go over there. Wildwood, of course, 76 and Wildwood, before the Chrome Shop. Uh, oh, um, what's that truck stop? There's a 76 on 95 in Florida. What's the name of that town? It feel like it begins with an O. You remember, put it in the comments, my mind's shot. I should look at a map. Gets with an O, right? Am I crazy? Yeah, it's driving me crazy now. How many towns begin with an O, too? I can't remember. Georgia, we had the TA in Brunswick, Georgia. There's a nice bar across the street. I used to go to that one. South Carolina. Oh, yeah, South Carolina. Yep, yep. Manning, South Carolina. 76 in Manning. Before the Chrome Shop. North Carolina, 
Carolina, you had Kenley, TA, 76. Then a big grizzly bear, you walked in before the chrome shop. I think that's where IO80 is now, if I'm not mistaken. Virginia, we had some good truck stops. White's truck stop. Ohio, remember Ohio? I-70, Shenandoah truck stop. And uh, Brook something. There's another truck stop near Shenandoah. Oh, shoot. What's the name of that place? Come on. Um, what is the name of that place? On Ice Washington, Old Washington, Buckeye Lake. Buckeye Lake. Holy cow. Buckeye Lake or Shenandoah, talk about a place to park at night and just watch the Lot Lizard Parade. Right in the middle of daylight, truck, the truck, the truck, the truck. Not my truck. But you can just watch that show going on all day on the radio. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I also like the Petro in New Paris, Ohio. There was an old chrome shop down the street from there too, I used to stop. Old Schmorgersburg Chrome Shop. It wasn't bad. That place was a mess. You just walked around, you never know what you were going to find. Brazil, Indiana had a truck stop. What about Missouri? Missouri, Missouri. Joplin, of course. Before the Chrome Shop Mafia. I 70. There was a Petro out there. Um, is it Kingdom City? Oak Grove, Missouri, 76. That's where I was during the OJ chase. Sitting in the truck stop store watching the little televisions as they were chasing OJ across LA. Oak Grove. I think it was a 76. Might have been a TA by that time. Stop in there before you go into the caves. Kansas City Mo. Or Kansas City, Kansas. It was probably very boring to most of you guys, but you old timers might get a kick out of this video. Nebraska. Nebraska has a good Nebraska has a good Bosselmans. Come on, Grand Island. I remember going to there with my dad in a truckers only section. My dad loved nothing more than to kick non-truckers out of the driver's section. He loved it. I watched him escort a few out by the scrub of the necks. Bosselmans. They had uh, Grand Island and over in Big Springs. Another one where you had where you had the big steak. You ate the steak. You ate no, the no, steak. How we doing, my friend? Not bad. I'm like a Ah, we can't complain, my friend. Have a good weekend when you get to it. Nice seeing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be good. Uh, yeah, Big Springs had that uh, belly buster challenge. My dad got his picture on the wall a few times. Might explain why he can barely walk now. Just stop at Cabela's over in Nebraska too. They built that. Maybe the name of town of Cabela's. They stop in there. Before you get into Wyoming. Yep, good times. A lot of memories. A lot of memories lost. A lot of lost miles. Alright. I don't think I've said enough here. Maybe this will make a video. Maybe it won't. I'm trying to think if I left anything out. Oh yeah, Dysarts, Bangor, Maine. Main. I mean, who's been to Dysarts? You, you go in there to get some apple pie, and you walk out with a new friend. Dysarts, that was a good one. Sturbridge Isle, Massachusetts. That was a good truck stop. They had real good food there while they lasted. Connecticut, we had. Uh, uh, TA in Milldale, Connecticut, which parking was always horrible. Mayflower, Sakani Brothers, Mayflower in Milford and in uh, Danbury. Exit 2. Who remembers that? Now there's a Starbucks there. What about the truck stops in New York? Fulton Mill, and then the one across the street. That's the one I used to stop at mostly when I drove for Walmart. I got real fat there. Uh, Katona, is it Katona or Canona? Down off of 17, had a nice truck stop down there, good food. When I say nice, nice truck stop, 
I mean, had good food. Uh, Pennsylvania, the green shingle. Good food, green shingle. Yep. Come across 90 there into uh, Ohio. Some other truck stops over there. My mind just went completely blank. All right. Let's finish this up. Thanks for watching. This might be a separate video, so I'm gonna say goodbye now. But this could be a separate video, just trucking memories, because I think I've said, I've said a lot enough. And I've said a lot enough. That doesn't even make sense. Boston Drug, a piece of grease.